Hey everyone, thanks so much for tuning in to the Magnanimous Collective. I'm your host, Sean Kubota. Let's start it off with a deep breath into the belly. And let it go. <sighs> oh yeah, dropped in. Yeah. <laughs> Today, I have a very special guest joining me all the way from Austin, Texas, a uh-huh. man who I haven't seen in 18 months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, super excited about this. My brother is a dating and relationship coach, a psychedelic facilitator, a breathwork facilitator, and a public speaker. Uh-huh. Um, he's a really great man with a really genuine heart. We've sat in ceremony together. We've uh-huh. done the men's work together, and um, we've traveled to Costa Rica together. Yes, sir. And, uh, I'm really happy to be here with you. Thank you for taking the time. Everyone, please uh, welcome Sam Gibbs Morris. Thanks for being here, bro. Thank you, brother. It's so great to be here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. Thank you. um, I saw you created this, and I was like, God, how? When when are the stars going to align to be here? Yeah. And then it it just like you told me before the recorded, like the way it happened, just yes. Yeah. Right. So cool. So so divinely aligned. It was like effortless. Yeah. I was like, I need. I'm going to need to reach out to some folks. And Sam's like, Hey, bro, I'm going to be in town. Yeah. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. So yeah, bro. You know. We've been we've been in in these spaces, these medicine yeah. spaces, these conscious spaces for mm-hmm. a long time. Yeah. And yet, as you know, there's people even in those spaces who are still caught up in that narrative of not really owning their story. Yeah. Right. And so, what I love to ask every guest who comes on here, mm-hmm. and it's somewhat of a prerequisite <laughs> yeah. for who comes on here, is like, you know, what were the pivotal moments or moment where uh-huh. in your life you chose, you recognized and chose in that moment, like, I, I'm kind of done playing out this story of, oh, what was me, the victim narrative. Yeah. You know, even though those feelings might have been there and those feelings may have been valid, like, and you chose, I'm going to start owning this story and shifting it or mm-hmm. reframing it, yeah. redirecting my life. Like, what were those? Yeah. Um, it's a great question. Mm-hmm. And it's it's funny that you, uh, I mean, I didn't know this coming into this, but uh, <laughs> my victim, you know, popped up this morning. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And so, like, it's one of those things that, like, and we know, like, with this work, like, the things that, that are the things that we work through, yeah. they never go anywhere. Right. We, we develop capacity and range and, mm. and ability to hold them yeah. and see them from a distance as opposed to being overtaken by them. Right. And uh, I'll tell you the big one mm. uh, in a minute, but the first little one mm. was actually when I first moved to Austin, Texas. Mm. And I lived on the third story of an apartment complex and um, no elevator. It was like older a building. Mm. And um, I was in a, just I just got my heart broken in California. Mm. I got to Austin and like things are bad and like yeah. business is not taking like nothing was working in my life. Mm. And I remember getting up to the third floor with like eighteen bags of groceries <laughs> yeah. on each arm. Oh, that's all I was thinking when you said no elevator. I'm like, fuck, <laughs> yeah. dude. Yeah. And yeah. so I have my key in my hand and my arm shaking. I just yeah. went up three flights of stairs and I and I go to put the key in the door and it falls on the ground and I literally burst out in tears, like, of course, right. of course. The straw. Of course, this happens yeah. to me. Yeah, and so I made, I immediately called up one of my friends, and I was like, I just like laid it out to her. I was like, this is fucking terrible. It's all I'm fucking mm-hmm. sad. I'm disappointed. I'm angry. She's like, wow, you're really you're really being a victim right now. Mm-hmm. And I was like, but I, for me, it was like, no, like this is like this just happens to me. Like I'm poor me, like you just said. Right. And she's like, uh, have you laughed? I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck do you mean? Like this is not a laughing matter. It's a good friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's like, I, I would say like every time that victim comes in, every time you feel like the world is against you, yeah, laugh at it. Mm, and that was like that was wow. a, like a little seemingly little like kind of everyday thing. Yeah. But it was the straw and it was the moment when I was like, all right. And so I started doing that and everything changed. Wow. Yeah, like all those moments when I catch myself like, yeah. oh poor me. You know, it's like, ha, 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 that's funny. I see you. <laughs> and I see what you're trying to spin there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what kind of movie is yeah, this? I didn't, yeah. I didn't remember signing up for that movie. Totally. Yeah. And so it, it totally diffuses the victim. Totally mm. like the victim just gets like kind of like put in its place a little bit. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, so I use that as a coping mechanism now when it pops up. I see. Um, the big one, I'll yeah. tell you the big one, you're actually kind of involved in the big one, mm. is that 18 months ago in Costa Rica. Mm. So, oh. yeah, when I was there, when yeah. we were there, um, I had just been diagnosed with cancer of my mouth, the oral cancer. Yeah. And um, going through that process, so I got diagnosed on November 1st and November 4th. Mm-hmm. We were in Costa Rica, I think, like November 25th, 6th, 7th, yeah. something like that. And then through early December. And I got back to Austin in uh, mid December and got the biopsy, and the cancer was gone. Yeah. And Mama so, Aya. Mama Aya. It's like, you're getting, yeah. get, get out of here. Yeah. And it, wow. it, the cancer was a lot of shame based. And, and mm-hmm. that, in that process, though, my victim, yeah. <clears throat> who, like, so that was 2019 when that thing happened with the laughing and the, right. and the keys. And I'm right. like, you know, I really like put my victim to bed. Right. And 
I, when I found out I had cancer, there was a little part of me. So I grew up um, really, really sick. Asthma, mm. food allergies, severe asthma, severe food allergies, choking mm. on my food. Uh, just oh, wow. like a lot of like childhood, Ill- like autoimmune illnesses. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That created a massive victim story in me. Mm. And like, I need to be saved. And like, right. you know, like nothing works out for me. And the mm. world is unsafe and all these things. And so mm. <clears throat> um, I also, in that, in that experience as a child, mm. got a lot of attention. And a lot mm. of love and a lot yeah. of focus. So I made up that victim equals love. Victim equals attention equals right. sympathy it equals compassion, like right. all the things. Right. And so when I got diagnosed with cancer, there was a little part of me. I felt this little part of me celebrating. Oh, yeah. We get to be sick again. Oh, we get to be a victim so again. So fascinating. Bro. Yeah. We get to be, we get to be, we get to be celebrated again. We get, right. to, we're going to get all this sympathy. Like, mm-hmm. like there was relief in it and yeah. it was like, wow, what the hell is this? And so, and then I made up and I heard it. I was like, oh, this is going to help my purpose. Like, this is going to help my mission. I can get on stage and talk about how I'm battling cancer in this right. like holistic way and like right. not going down the chemo route and all this. Yeah. And then when I got, when I got back from Costa Rica and they're like, cancer has gone. I was like, I felt that same little part of me get sad. Uh, he was like, "Wait, wait! We don't get to be sick anymore. Whoa. Like, but bro, we yeah. need we need this. Like, this is this is like th- we need this to survive. Like, that's the legitimizing factor. Legitimizing factor. Yeah. Like, what are we gonna do without this? Like, so we're just gonna be. Bro. Yeah, I know. And <laughs> well, so, like, and to see that, yeah. like, wow. Mm. And so that was a that like that whole experience was a huge like shedding. Yeah. Of that last little remnant of the victim. But like I said, like it popped up this morning, and I'm like, mm. oh, like something happened, and I was like, oh. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> and then, then, but I have the, now the skills in the moment to be like, oh, I see what's happening. Mm. And it's just kind of like, I see you. I'm like, okay, you're a little frustrated, a little annoyed, a little irritable, whatever it is. Yeah. But you know what? There's, there's no place for that. Bro. <laughs> Give me some. That, yeah. <laughs> so let's just take a breath into that for a second yeah, yeah. before we dive into it. <sighs> I commend your awareness Mm. and observation of the self and the emotions and the feelings and the thoughts, all of it happening and being like, wow, I'm really doing that right now. It's very much a 5D aspect of being. It's a higher, like literally a higher dimensional plane of existence and Mm -hmm. consciousness where you're literally experiencing yourself operating through time and through thought and being like, Am I really choosing that? Yeah. Right? And and I feel like a lot of individuals don't. A lot of individuals operate just within that, and this is what I am. And, like, there's, there's you know, it, it's it's literally like wearing a big sun hat. Mm-hmm. And you're not seeing above. And it's like, yep. hey, just bring your head above water maybe or just, just take off the hat and look just, down. Yeah. Um, I just find that so fascinating because I feel like a lot of us can relate, maybe not in, in as extreme of ways, mm-hmm. right, as having cancer or yeah. being, like, super sick, but just, like, Whatever it is, I, your story is analogous to, I would say, the the epidemic of victimhood within society, which mm-hmm. is, if if there is something wrong with me, if mm-hmm. my pain is greater, then I get more love, I get more attention, I mm-hmm. get support, like, hey, you know, and then it becomes a competition. Yeah. And I feel like that's what we're experiencing in society a lot of, 100%. which is individuals who are maybe bitter and stubborn that they've worked really hard and you, they see these victims and they're like, I have no sympathy and compassion for these people. And yeah. then there are the victims who are just being like, look at my pain. Because yeah. of my pain, I can't do this. Yeah, I can't do that. Oh, yep. give me free things. Give, mm-hmm. you know, give me free love. Give me free this, whatever. And yeah, so this is so fascinating. I love it. And I'd love to ask, like, when you felt that piece of you get sad, how did you process that? Well, for, at first I was mm-hmm. confused because I'm like, I just found out I don't have cancer. Like, I should be celebrating. Right. When in reality, I celebrated when I found out I did have it. And so I'm like, I'm like sitting there, I'm like, well, what's going on? Well, and my girlfriend yeah. at the time was like, are you serious? Like, yeah. like, we should be like celebrating. And I was like, I don't know. I just feel sad. And so when I got through it, I, I mm-hmm. recognized what was happening. Mm-hmm. And that's when it's like, okay, I have the skills. Like, I can go back to that little boy yeah. that was so sad, that was so scared, that was so mm-hmm. whatever, and just be with him. And mm-hmm. give him that, close that loop for him. Close it, like f- p- get that fragmented piece into whole. Right. And that's what I did. I really got to work on like what is it? What is it? How does that not? Ser- how did that serve me so far? And how mm. does it not serve me anymore? Mm. Because there's there's like an element of um, it, when I say relief, I mean like there's an element of like things will be provided for you right. when you're sick. And it's right. like okay, that's nice and maybe convenient, but at the same yeah. time, like it's not an actual 
leadership. It's not actual like stepping into power. It's not, totally. there's none of that. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I just, I really got to work and like, okay, thank you for showing me. And like, mm-hmm. what else gets to be seen here? What else gets to be looked at? Mm-hmm. It's a stone I had left unturned before. Mm-hmm. And now I get to turn that stone over. Wow. And I think, <laughs> I think too, like, as you were talking about those like kind of two sides of it, yeah, I feel like there's a third side as well mm. of um, martyrdom. Where Absolutely. It, where it's like, yeah. it, and, it, and it keeps people in yeah. struggle. Because like they, they preach, bro. Yeah, <laughs> preach. Hundred percent. People will be like, and I did this for a long time. Like, yeah. I'm struggling harder than you, so I deserve more. Right. I'm struggling. Look at me. My struggle is bigger than it's a struggle pissing contest. Hundred percent. And so dude. people will create yeah. like either it's financial or love or the big ones. Yeah. You know, like they'll create struggles in those areas because like you know what I haven't struggled enough because I'm not getting enough attention. Because peace and calm and acceptance mm-hmm. and love and yeah. being supported, that's not enough. It has to be come from this like chaotic energy of right. ex, like the fire energy of like yeah. it has to be a bigger struggle. Right. And it's it's and that and the victim loves that. Bro, hundred percent. And you know, when you when you talk about this, like I, I've mentioned it a lot on the podcast, like it's in the book as well as like supreme or severe altruism, mm. right? Like the the martyrdom, the the supreme saviorhood where it's like Oh, and which, to break that down even deeper, it is the, the quote-unquote, the individual thinking or, or coming from this space of kindness or compassion or love, but actually dishonoring the sovereignty of the individual and their chosen right to suffer mm. and be in misery, Yeah, right? And so it's like, oh, you are disempowered. You are so weak. You can't do it, so I have to come and save you, and because of that, I'm a more righteous person. Mm-hmm. When it's like, if that person is experiencing that stuff and they've chosen that path as yeah. a sovereign conscious being, yeah. and you're actually denying them of the the uh, consequences of that, yeah. the boundaries of that. Yep. And that's why I always talk about there's love and boundaries. Like uh-huh. if we try to save our loved ones from everything, yeah. we will that is a in an act of violence in a sense, right? Yes, yeah, totally. Like you can be actively neglecting something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Uh, it's a very fascinating topic, but truly this this martyrdom, this altruism, all of this stuff is like altruism in its sense is a good thing. And there's ways that martyrdom can be aligned where yep. it's like a beautiful <clears throat> sacrifice. And there's this, this misalignment within it mm-hmm. um, that is very prevalent today. And I'd say absolutely there is that third component. There's yeah. those who essentially enable the victims yep. and keep them in that perpetual cycle of victimhood. Yep. It's that reciprocity. Yes. Agreed, 100%. Yeah, and I think also as you're talking about like essentially coming in and soothing somebody, yeah. you're robbing them of an experience. Exactly. You're, you're totally yeah. taking them away. Like, I see this a lot in facilitation. And mm-hmm. like, my journey with facilitation, whether yeah. it's psychedelics or breath work or even men's work, mm-hmm. is like, you want, like, there's that, oh, I, I got to come in and like drive this car. I got to come in and like drive the show. But really, there's so much value in just like, yeah, bro, go do what yeah. you got. I'm here. Like, I am not going anywhere and right. I'm not going to come in and give you a hand in this moment. Right. I'm, I'm going to be here. And when you're ready for it, you can reach for my hand. Yeah. But for me to come in and stop your experience is to, is to shut you off 100%. and you're, you're going to continue to loop in that yeah. because you haven't fully processed that yet. And it's, mm-hmm. it's like, so it's almost like in facilitation, yeah. do less. hundred percent. Yeah. You know, I love that we're, we've, we've both navigated the psychedelic space as well, like yeah. the cosmonaut space, because when I first started my journeys with psychedelics, mm-hmm they were by myself. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until way later where I actually started to feel safe enough and also just start to experience stuff in ceremony with yeah. people. I mean, ultimately, you're experiencing everything within yourself. But <laughs> the thing that I found to be profound for me was to not have the option to panic, to know in the back of my mind, like, there's no coming for help. So you <laughs> sit with this shit. Yeah. And I feel like when we talk about bad trips or this and that, like, I feel like that is the individual trying to run away and not choosing to be like, no, confront this. Yep. It can't hurt you. I've had yeah. the most insane, like scary stuff come my way inside yeah. of, you know, my mind's eye. And yet it's like, I, I say, okay, cool. Like you yeah. can't hurt me. It's all good. Yeah. And then, whew. but I feel like that's so emblematic of where we're at today too, which is like those that are running, those that are, that are running from the thing, not yep. choosing to confront their own power. Mm-hmm. And, and that's one of the biggest cornerstones of this podcast is to, eventually bring forth through speaking, through the podcast, through the books, through all of it, and just mm-hmm. through, you know, people hearing our conversations to start to reframe how we operate within society as to what is normalcy. Yeah. And what would our society look like? And, and if you understand sovereignty, it's like people can do whatever they want. People are going to be murderers. People are going to be yep. shit bags and blah, blah, blah. But if we keep imposing in the narrative of all people that people are disempowered and that is the core narrative, yeah. 
oh, that's just screwy. It's just you know? screwy. Like, what if the narrative is, hey, you are so powerful that you can choose creation, destruction, everything in between. Yeah. And you're always choosing it, and you're responsible for it, and yep. these are the consequences for infringing on other people's sovereignty. Yep. Now go do what you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, sweet. Sweet. Yeah. Clear. Easy. We yeah. don't have, like, political parties doing this weird shit. Well, and Simplify that stuff. Simplifies, totally simplifies yeah. stuff, and there's people out there that would freeze in that moment. Mm. Uh, what? Mm. Like, say more. Like, what do you do in that moment? Like, okay, mm-hmm. so I have complete sovereignty, but that means like big pharma's not telling me what to do. That means doctors aren't telling me what to do. That right. means uh, traffic lights aren't telling me what to do. Like, all laws, like, you're yeah. completely free to make your own decisions. And, mm-hmm. and knowing that you are the creator of everything that you are experiencing, yeah. some people can't handle that. I mean, th- this is a very good point. And I feel like that's why I was just talking about this with, with my other guest. We can choose to see things as a blessing or a curse. Yeah. You know, like if you don't see God in all, you won't see God at all mm-hmm. type of thing. And that's how I choose to see things. And there's been so many people who have wanted to bring forth revolutionary technology. Yeah. Or revolutionary, or revolutionary ideas, so forth, yeah. that have been killed, beaten, whatever it is, right? Mm-hmm. Hindered from exposing it to the public. And a part of us can see that as like, oh, there's some malevolent agenda trying to keep us down. Maybe so. And is that just not potentially spirit and the laws of nature helping us not to go so fast, yeah, too fast, too quick yep. that we destroy ourselves? Yeah. So I hear that. Yeah. yeah. And on that note, like whether it's, you know, murder or mm-hmm. suicide or whatever it is, yeah. it's still divine order. Right. On the macro, it's still mm-hmm. the way spirit is, is guiding this whole damn thing. Right. And that, however that looks, we can make up a story about however that looks. I mean, this right. goes in the conversation now, like, you know, was Hitler a bad guy or a good guy? Was mm-hmm. 9-11 a good thing or a bad thing? Right. Like, to a lot yeah. of people in the world, both those things were good things. Yeah. We can sit here and mm-hmm. say, like, that's not really great. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, like, on yeah. a very, like, that's really terrible shit. Yeah. And that's our experience of it, and that's the story we make up about it. And there's a collective consciousness mm-hmm. that supports all that. Right. You know, it's like right. the 100th monk, monkey theory. Right. Yep. It's like, there, there's things going on that, like, we are all responsible for, and mm-hmm. we can make up bad or good and, and absolve ourselves of all responsibility. Yeah. Or we can, like Gandhi said, be the change. Yeah, yeah. Fully agree, bro. Ooh, this yeah. is a good one. Um, <laughs> yeah, man, you know, so, just to share where I've gone to from this yeah. point, right? Like, I was... You know, I, I've went through many iterations, and one of those was Ptolemy the Messenger. Like, I made music, um, uh-huh. and it was it was very much like very empowerment based preachy sort of. And I wanted to save people, uh-huh. and I feel like that's not a bad thing to want to save people from their misery. The weird thing about where I'm at now with this, and you know, we're talking about individuals getting messed up from trying to bring things forward. And that's not what I'm worried about now, mm-hmm. but more so in the sense of me trying to keep integrity with what I'm choosing to do and what I'm building. Yeah. <clears throat> and not try to be in that space of that severe altruist, of that martyr, of that person who's just trying to save everyone. Yeah. I feel like I'm not trying to save everyone. I feel like I'm just trying to level the playing field so they can actually mm-hmm. know what they're choosing. Yes. Because I feel like that is insidious and I don't that doesn't sit right with me. Yeah. I rather them choose once they recognize what they're doing. Like I'm still going to choose to be a shitbag. Okay, yeah, cool. Great. I honor you in doing yeah. whatever you want to do. And there's consequences for when you infringe on anyone else's freedom and sovereignty. Totally. Like if you if you mess up with everyone, these are the consequences. Mm-hmm. Cool. You go with that? Cool. But I'm not trying to save them from themselves. It's more so save them, or, or it's more like liberate us from this BS narrative. Yes. Which I feel like is the blasphemy. Yeah. Is the dishonoring of the divine child yeah, yeah right totally mm. yeah i love that it's it's like we can go you can try and go in and save them like that and that's you're gonna run into a lot of dead ends there yeah because yeah. that's that person's karma contract that whole contract will mm-hmm. play out one yeah. way or another yeah yeah and what you can do though is this is goes back to i saw a great quote it said you can never uh you can never if, I, i'm gonna butcher this but you can never force them to change but never underestimate the power of planting a seed mm. like mm-hmm. what you get to do is you get yeah. to have all these things the the platforms you're creating yeah and speak and B and yeah. like whoever's gonna hear it's gonna hear it. Yeah, someone's gonna see it and be like, nah, what's that guy? What's that guy doing? Yeah, yeah. But like, all you can do is show up and be that beacon. Yeah, and blast out the information that's gonna help with the mission that you're on. Yeah, and then allow people to come to it naturally. Agreed. Because that's really the only way change happens. It is. Like I have so many women call me and be like, oh my my husband or my boyfriend needs your help. I'm like, great. 
I'm sure he does. Does he know that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, like, yeah. and it's like, it, it's the same thing. Like until mm-hmm. someone knows, until so, humans love the most, the most important thing to a human when, yeah. when going into something is, do I feel like I chose to be here? Right. And if you, like, if you're, if we're coming in and trying to save people yeah. and like, get over here, they're like, I don't really want to be here. Yeah. I'm doing it because my wife said so, because maybe right. I think it's a good idea, but I don't right. really want to. Yeah. When a human feels invited in and they chose to be there. Yeah. That's when lasting change happens. 100%. Agreed, and I find that that's also something that's very specific to psychedelics as well. Oh yeah, because when I first started to journey with psychedelics, I was I'd been I was a dancer, I was a break dancer, and then <laughs> I became like house dancer. I would dance for hours yeah. until I just got so blissed out. I was close my eyes and I'm just in my space. I'd get yeah. so euphoric that I just sit down and meditate, mm. and I was like in bliss in that meditation, but I wanted to like open. I was like, there's something more. I feel comfortable in this space now. Mm-hmm. And from then I decided to journey and my friend gave me um, some stuff, some medicine, and I blasted off full on DMT experience. Yeah. And I kept, continued to have those and I journeyed with that. And that's yeah. where I, you know, got a lot of these downloads of remembrances over like a span of like two years from like 2011 to 2012, uh-huh. something like that. Anyways, all that to be said, during that time, I did not, I was naive and did not know that people who utilize these same medicines were getting completely different experiences and or like very little experiences, right? And so when I started to go to transformational festivals Mm -hmm. and go to these places where there were these individuals with sacred G all over them and like looking the part, having dresses and that, but I was like, whoa, these dudes have been in for so long. They know Mm -hmm. that Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like yeah. we oftentimes what I found is that most of the people who'd like dress the part were not the part. Yes. And I learned that very abruptly many times. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's 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 funny about how when you're ready, when yeah. you're wanting, yeah. when you're willing, and when you're opening to what that is, then you can actually receive it. But if not, it's not gonna give you Dude, you know mic drop. Like yeah. that's it. Like you so like deep honor for your experience there where you were like, wait. I got to a point where I'm kind of tapped out in my human potential here. Mm-hmm. Like I've reached some states and I've gotten mm-hmm. to some places yeah. and like, it feels like there's something more that as a human, in my sober human form, right. it, it feels tapped out. Right. You know, and it's, yeah. it's great. It's not taking, like I could continue on this and have yeah. breakthroughs and do all the things. And a, a seeker like yourself, like myself, yeah. we have essentially earned the right to mm-hmm. be ready for mm-hmm. the medicines to actually serve us. Right. You yeah. know, and be our allies. Yeah. But you see, I see so many people that are like, just on the path and they've read all about psychedelics and they've heard yeah. about Bufo and they've heard about right. ayahuasca. I'm like, I want to go do it. I'm like, eh, you need to do a little work first. Like, yeah. What, yeah. what's, why? Why yeah. now? What's going on? And for me, it was like, it was six, it's almost seven years of AA work, like human mm. work, like looking mm. at my shit over mm. and over mm. and over, over however mm. it looked. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, they're, they're, I got to where you got. Like I was yeah. like meditating and doing all the things and like some patterns were repeating. I'm like, mm-hmm. there's something more. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's, there's another layer here that I, that like it feels less cyclical, more like expansive and, and growth oriented. Yeah. And that was plant medicine. Mm. And mm. it was, and I think it's so important to honor the human experience. And even in, even when you start doing the plant medicine, right. yeah. like massive time in between ceremonies. Yeah. So let, let the human take hold and land because other, if you keep, you know, medicine hopping, ceremony hopping, yeah. like doing DMT at house parties, like what? I mean, it's like <laughs> you're not getting anything a chance to land. Yeah, well, and, and you become an alien kind of like I did, uh, <laughs> where I'm just playing healing music all day long, just blissed out, yeah. sending. I would just be in the bus going to college, just sending people love. And at a certain point, I would like, you know, open my eyes and I was like, no one's feeling this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just this hippie kid yeah. trying to make everyone feel blissed out yeah. and no one's feeling, oh, maybe I should come back down. Uh, yeah. And, and yeah, you know, one of the ways that I ended up realizing, you know, what we're talking about really really clearly was I was around individuals who would take the same medicines and even even higher doses and just be like, I'm ready to party. And for mm. me, I'm sitting deep prani, I'm just like, <sighs> just like yeah. vibrating and purging yeah. and whatever and just like I can't yeah. even talk for like three hours. Uh-huh. And they're just like, oh, the color, the food. What? <laughs> right? Um, and yet so much shadow there. So much so so the 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 egoic self, the actual human aspect of the self was so strong and so yeah reached like so in gear and in the driver's seat that there was no surrender to what the medicine could actually do. Yeah. Right. And um, some people maybe are so sensitive that they don't have that control. And mm-hmm. then they have those bad trips with like, I don't yeah. know how to navigate yeah, this. Yeah. Holy shit. And then freak out, try to run. Yep. So yeah, it's, it's an, it's a very interesting, delicate, but beautiful space. A hundred percent. And that's what I think you just know that where bad trips mm-hmm. come from is yeah. that like, it's, it's that, 
shift between like the human experience of like I'm in control, I can analyze things, like yeah. things make sense to me, mm-hmm. and then you shift into like all of a sudden things aren't making sense to me, <laughs> and like morph, there's something, bro. yeah, something <laughs> else is happening here. This is really bad, and I'm having yeah. a terrible time. And yeah. it's it's really it's the surrender piece. Yeah, 100%. it's the surrender and the readiness. Yeah. <laughs> I remember my my time of freaking having a surrender. I, I so I'll I'll just share it with you because um, it's a little funny. You know Spongle, right? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Oh, I'll I'll share a I'll share a song with you later. Divine moments of truth. Yeah. DMT. But anyways, Please. my buddy who was a psychedelic guy, all he did was psychedelics. I asked him for DMT. I'm like, hey, I want to try this. Mm-hmm. You know? He's like, no, you should do LSD. I'm like, whoa, 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 that's not natural. I want to do like, <laughs> should I do mushrooms first? He's like, no, trust me. He gives me two hits. They turn out to be double hits, so I take four hits for my Fuck. first time. Um, and I'm rolling a joint because I was the weed guy. Like, I, I had connections and stuff. Anyways, yeah. I'm rolling this thing, and I'm just like, <sighs> and more starts going, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. feeling nauseous, feel like, well, uh-huh. I can't, what the, what the, what the, what the. Yeah. and went to uh, the bathroom and purged for, I don't even know how long. Mm-hmm. And as I purged, it was like, a f- like you know how a fly has like yeah. thousands of eyeballs. Yeah, yeah. It was like an eyelid going this way, oh and God. every time that happened, it was just like pff, all these eyes. And then I ended up becoming like a whole sphere of consciousness where I could wow. see like below me, above me, and oh, in that man. in that DMT portal where it's yeah. just infinite inner workings yeah, of like yeah. colored machinery type. Like, <laughs> and and then the journeys began. Oh man. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I, I know about that 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 liminal space between. Mm-hmm. You know, surrendering to it or not. Yeah. And the funny thing is, like, at a certain point, it's like, you got, at least for me, it was like, you don't have a choice. <laughs> that's, that's the one. <laughs> you don't, you yeah. don't have a choice, man. You got to uh, yeah. surrender. Let me or be dragged. Um, yeah. Yeah. Or be dragged, I guess. So. Yeah. I don't want to Yeah. Do I feel like with all the medicines, there's like, they, they all have that come up. Yeah. Of like the 30, 45 minutes where you took it, you're like, okay. And it's always different. It's Even always different. you could eat the same mushrooms. <laughs> Right. Every whatever three months, totally. and it's gonna come, the come up's gonna be in that yeah. first wave is where you're invited mm-hmm. to be like, okay, just let it go, just yeah. surrender to it. Yeah. And it's hard sometimes. <laughs> you're like, this yeah, is bro. real intense. <laughs> yeah, especially when you've been trying to build in the 3D, and yeah. you're just like, yeah. That's why I took a I took a break away from when we sat with Aya in Costa Rica. Mm-hmm. Um, I hadn't sat in like legit ceremony for probably a good like five years. Mm. Wow. Yeah, and. Um, because I was just like trying to build in business yeah, and all these yeah, ways. Yeah. And it was just like, I don't have time to lose myself again. Yeah, was my my yeah. old narrative. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I had done that. I was yeah. a total new age hippie in, the, in my 20s, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I think, and that's one of the things about Bufo or DMT is that mm-hmm. that come up is so fast. Like, but you know. It, Bro, like, laser beam. Laser beam. Like, I just got, I'm here doing ceremonies in three mm-hmm. days. And it's mm-hmm. like, the uh, there's no like, you don't that choice of like I don't have a choice anymore yeah. happens so fast with DMT, right? Like yeah. with, there's like such a buildup with acid or uh, ayah or a mushrooms. You're 100%. like, okay, my human's still here and it's coming, yeah. it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Oh yeah. fuck, I'm in it. Yeah, Buffo is just like, no, I'm in it. <laughs> scent, scent, full, full yeah. scent, bro. And it, it, so no, it's like yeah. you can let go anytime yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, hundred yeah. percent. And you know, well, I don't know if we should talk about this on the pod. Maybe we should. I don't know, but the the thing that I find really fascinating about Buffo too. And I'm sure you've experienced this being a facilitator. I've been around and helped facilitators. Yeah. It is, it can be blissful and mm-hmm. it can be beautiful. It can also be like disturbing. Yeah. Like individuals, I've had to like hold down individuals as they're clawing at my face. Mm-hmm. You know, there are people who like, if we didn't hold them back, they would have killed themselves. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. it's wild. Like, and most people, they're in it, and they're just oh, so deep within. It's like, oh, maybe crying, yeah. like, you know. And then there's some people who, like, full-on entities take over. Yeah. That is, like, when it's people wild. are like, oh, no, exorcism entities, the spirits. Well, like, you, once you see that, yeah. your eyes will be open, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's wild. And yeah. right, it's the full range. It's the full the range. full range yeah. of, like, I mean, I've literally, and there's no rhyme or reason to it. Right. About like fit, like physical metabolism or size yeah, yeah, or anything. No, like, no, no. I've seen little Asian women that come yeah. in and just lay there. Boom. Yes. Yeah. 20 minutes, just nothing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then giant 220 pound bodybuilders. Yeah, yeah. Scream like little little boys. Yeah. yeah. Like no <laughs> makes no sense at all. Right. About like and, and that's yeah. the that's the beauty of it. Is mm-hmm. that like you get there and everyone asks me, like, what's it gonna be like? Like I, I legitimately <laughs> do not know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, so true. Me telling you yeah. would create a potential bad trip or, or lead you astray. A story and expectation. Yeah. yeah. 
I honor that. And I think that, so I think true. that's part of the the trust factor of these medicines. Yeah. All of them mm-hmm. yeah. is like you 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 have to know mm-hmm. that these two extreme experiences exist for you. Yes, and you don't get to decide which one you're going to get. Right. Like you can do a lot of work and be ready to handle and hold all of it. Right. But within it, yeah, there's a, this is just like relationship. Like the only yeah. thing like going into relationship, the only thing I say is the only thing you need to be ready for is to not be ready. And that's a psychedelic experience as well. The only thing that the work you do as a human mm-hmm. is preparing you mm-hmm. to not be ready, but to have the capacity to hold your unreadiness. Mm. I love that. That's what that's when bad trips are kept at bay is because yeah. oh, I didn't expect that, but here we are. Okay, yeah. I got this. Let me breathe, let me breathe. Do whatever I got to do. Mm. <sighs> yeah. Oh man, I'm loving this. Yeah. <laughs> the capacity to hold. Mm. The capacity to hold, you know, not to say that I necessarily want to switch from the medicine talk, but mm. what comes up for me as we're talking about this, we're talking about this in relationships, we're talking about this in, in, the, in the medicine space. A big thing that comes up for me is the capacity to hold oneself in emotional regulation, mm. right? Because if we bring it back to, you know, society and where we're at and, you know, this desire for... Um, Helping people to illuminate themselves as to like, hey, look, you're not a victim. You can choose that story. You can own that story. Mm -hmm. But keep in mind, like the the thing that the way that I'm choosing to define and reframe sovereignty going forward in how I speak is that you are responsible for your your reality creation, whether you own it or not. Mm -hmm. Right. So like you can choose to be like, no, I'm not living a life. Blah blah blah. That doesn't mean you're not responsible for it. Yeah. And that is a differentiating factor between us living in a society where everyone is disempowered and playing this bullshit narrative where they're not responsible Mm -hmm. we are yeah and something that is just so not only immature but just blasphemous or desecrating in a way to the self to the divinity of the self to like how beautiful and powerful and amazing we are as human beings as life you know like god's children like creation destruction everything in between like the choice of free will of like what to do with that and being in this human body whatever the heck we are to be able to to create and express in in any artistic fashion to not own our emotions and our emotional regulation, to not honor our feelings, but also own the fact that like we alone are responsible for regulating ourselves. Yes. You know, and I feel like in society right now, there's like the, oh, you need to do X, Y, and Z so that I am not emotionally triggered. Yep. Because that causes me pain. And so therefore you model your whole life around me mm-hmm. so that I can be a liability and emotionally unstable. Yeah. <laughs> like that's a really good way to make a really, you know, f- brittle society. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're basically asking for permission to remain a victim in right. a sense. Like you're yeah. saying like, Oh, like when you're around me, don't say and be fully yourself. Cause mm-hmm. that triggers me. Yeah. And so then every, a lot of people are like, okay, so I'll just like shrink, shrink and yeah. like, and self abandon. Yeah. And mm. so, and that's there's no ownership in that. And there's there's yeah. no ownership on either side of that. Point. Right. And there's no there's no and that's why their suicide rates are highest because yeah. one person is completely inauthentic and depressing mm-hmm. the, depressing themselves. Yeah. The other person is just unable to handle the reality of anything. Mm. And I so, love this. And so there's like there, there's and like in like a fully expressed relationship. Two people yeah. fully expressed in a relationship. Yeah. Is one of the most beautiful things in the whole world. Mm. And like, and to know, like, to, and to see that in public, like, you mm-hmm. see, it's like, it looks like best friends, it looks like teammates, it looks like lovers. Yeah. But the things that go on behind closed doors is like both people being fully expressed, meaning like nothing sticks. Mm. Like no one's no one's like going through a day when they're like, oh, you pissed me off this morning. It's like let's something happens, let's talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like there's nothing in there that mm. is like you everyone like it's almost like have the trigger, know your triggers, your ownership yeah. of your triggers so yeah. well that you can go in a relationship and be like, hey, these are the things that set me off. Um, I'm not asking you to tiptoe around them. Mm-hmm. I'm asking for a little bit of compassion and awareness around them so you don't yeah. weaponize them. Mm. And you know, let's have a conversation about where we get to meet each other in these yeah. things so that we can hold each other in them. Mm-hmm. Because historically, everyone's yeah. been triggered so much in relationships that they get in relationships and it's almost the expectation. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna avoid relationships because you know, I I get avoided or I get anxious or I get mm-hmm. whatever it is, uh, codependent. Yeah, and like so, people just are like they have not done the work to you know hold capacity to hold those things. Yeah, like those things are in there. They're mm-hmm. gonna be in there a lot, and it's everyone yeah. wants to get rid of things. Everyone wants to like clear it. Mm. Clearing it is actually not getting rid of it. It's it's having the capacity to hold it. Mm. That's what clearing really means. 
Because then it doesn't drive the show anymore. Dude. Ah, gold. And then another yeah. thing, uh, I was told this, um, ownership does not require your approval. Right. So a lot of right. times we think, oh, I'm, I'm good with that. Yes, I can own that. Yeah. And it's like, no. Yeah, like yeah. ownership, ownership stands above approval. Like mm-hmm. you don't, oh, I don't approve of that. I don't approve of my money situation. I don't. Appro- Great, but you still get to own how you created it. Yeah, agreed. One hundred percent. Once again, like you're responsible for your Audi creation, whether you own it or not. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Yep. And <clears throat> when you were talking about being in that partnership and not wanting to weaponize, you know, these issues and so forth, and 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 giving space for compassion in regards to what we're essentially triggered by or mm-hmm. have had happen in the past. Like, I don't know, there's there's so much that happens in relationships as as a means of reflection. We become vulnerable and then these things get brought up, right? Mm-hmm. And it's it's there was this quote where it's like relationships are a are the vehicle for healing. And it was like a definite like they are the vehicle for healing. Mm-hmm. It's not just like supposed to be good forever. <laughs> it is like the vehicle for healing. Yeah. It is like the framework for it. And when you talk about the opportunity to have compassion and not weaponize these these things, these potential sore points or, mm-hmm. or whatnot, I feel like yes to that. And also, if the individuals are not able to be in sync and online with the understanding of owning one's re- emotional regulation, yeah. then it just gets messy. And I feel like a big way to own things in that very temperamental, volatile space, which could very easily be rectified by teaching our youth correctly, is to understand how to process or understand how to do a charge clearing. Like, yeah. What if it looked like that? Yeah. And it can, and yet it's so out of our norm because our yeah. subconscious pathways go to how our parents acted yeah. or what we've seen in TV shows. Mm-hmm. Well, what if we start seeing that in TV shows? What mm-hmm. if we start teaching it to our kids? Yeah. Then it's like, okay, what are the facts for you? You know, What are the feelings? What's yeah. the story? Yeah. Okay, what do you need? Yep. So different. What does love want in this moment? Right. Not what I want. What does love yeah. want? Yeah. Mm. What is love asking us to do? The hard questions. Yeah. And and what does it look like to, you know, yes. And when you say that, it gives me chills because it's like, and and in all of that, like for me, for instance, like sometimes for me, it's like getting so charged that there needs to be a clearing. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, oh, well, I'm in this, you know, apartment in the middle of the city with neighbors and I only got, you know, my, my you know, partner, my woman here. Mm-hmm. Like, where are the dudes to hold me so that I can let out aggression in a healthy way? Yeah. And that's where village comes back into play totally. too, right? Like, yeah. yes, we're meant to have our, our you know, um, our private domicile, so to speak, but to not be able to be like, hey, bros, I, in order for me to be safe and for the, for everyone to be safe, yeah. I need to, I need to have someone hold me right now so I can release because this yeah. is too much for me to release with my woman. Yeah. That's so different. So different. Right. It's so healthy. Yeah. And it also, it keeps, it keeps your woman from being your coach, your mother, your 100%, therapist 100%. and vice versa. Like, yeah, it, like the woman needs a, a place. And women are, this is where women are ahead of the curve of the men because yeah. women have been doing this for millennia. Right. And yeah. men, we, we haven't been really, ga- we've been gathering in groups and not like we do now. Yeah. And so to keep the, the relationship health there where you mm-hmm. can actually be each other's partner mm-hmm. and lover mm-hmm. and the polarity still remains and all right. that is to have outlets like that. Mm. Where you can go to your brothers and just be like, bro, I need to rage right now. And I need like yeah. three of you to witness me doing it. Mm-hmm. 100%. And, and just do that. And push against me. Or do yeah. what I like. Yeah, yeah. Like someone pitch punch me in the face. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Call, like, me, call me out. Whatever and, it is. And what I want to say there is that for any women who are hearing this, you know, or even men who don't understand that, like that's okay. Because yeah. it might not be your medicine. But just because mm-hmm. it's not your medicine does not mean that it's not someone else's medicine. Yeah. yeah. I know? think men have a very distorted relationship with their own rage. Mm-hmm. I've yeah. seen, I see a lot. Like yeah. a lot of my, like I'll have my clients come to me mm-hmm. and they're all bottled up in the relationship. I'm like, have you screamed recently? Right. They're like, no, no, I'm afraid of that part. Yeah. And it's like, bro, you've got to get in touch with that part of you. Yeah. It is primal. It is everything that you need. And if you, if it's you energy. Continue, it's energy. If you yeah. continue to deny it, yeah. it will continue to take over. And it'll and create sickness. Out. It creates sickness. Yeah. Creates, dis-ease, not it, being at ease. Totally. Yeah. And it'll manifest in your own physical stuff. And it'll manifest yeah. in like, in, you know, you'll, you'll, if you're not in touch with your own rage, you're not in touch with your own intimacy. Yeah. You, you know, the better Agreed. you fight, the better you fuck. Agreed. Like it's like, yeah. you've got 100%. to, you have to, we have to learn to relate. Yeah. And the thing of it is, like, individually, men, yeah. Have probably experienced a, mo- a moment in their in their life. Yeah. 
teenagers or early 20s when, mm-hmm. when their rage hurts somebody else yes. or themselves. Yes. And so we immediately just, okay, nope, that's, that's not coming out ever again. Yeah. yeah. I am dangerous. That yeah. is dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not an angry person. Yeah. Maybe you're not, but you still, it still lives inside of you. Yeah. And the fact that you shut it down because it caused pain in the past is not right. It's not a reason. Yeah. The thing is, is like we relate to that to the point where, and, and it's a collective thing too. Like the collective rage of men yeah. has caused women a lot mm-hmm. of pain and right. other, uh, most of society, a lot of pain yeah. for just thousands and thousands of years. Yeah. And so a lot of men carry that and like, oh no, rage is anger is destructive. Rage is right. destructive. It's painful. Right. It's going to hurt. Yeah. Yeah. When you don't, when you don't honor it yeah. and, and make it sacred and go into those places where you can express it, mm-hmm. then yes, it does become destructive because you're going to lash out at your kid, your dog, your wife, whatever it is. Yeah. Because so like I, I I love that and and just to share with you I talk about this a lot almost every podcast but I love the analogy like it, it came to me or the metaphor in that like I'm a really really big proponent of therapy mm-hmm. and or man's work all of it yeah. what I find therapy is like is just being able to have a little receptacle I think about friends or loved ones wearing all white and you're literally carrying around a full to the brim cup of wine punch or something <laughs> like that it's just gonna fucking get all over them or red wine whatever you want to think right and. They're trying to talk to you, and they're coming close to you, and probably yeah. like, oh shit, no, I, can't, I, can't, yeah. I can't even, I uh-huh. can't even, like, I can't even talk to my buddies because I'm just going to spill this all over them. Yeah, and having those places to just be like, okay, I can offload a little bit. Okay, now I can talk to you because I'm not yeah. worried about spilling on you. Yes, but when we have the support of other men or women, whatever it is, to fully, fully go there, it's like having not only you point it out yourself, like. Oh God. It's someone literally, yep. people helping you like this. Yep. Someone's got like a hose, they're spraying out the inside of yes. it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's so different and it's so needed. And yep. once again, what is needed to be built into the fabric of society? Yeah. There's so much work to be done, but like those are those are key factors is is being able to have appropriate grieving, appropriate release. And even able, like yeah. you, like you're going to jitsu. Like I go, I do fight oh, club so at, like Friday mornings. I'll, I'll hit a heavy bag, do yeah, more yeah. Thai kickboxing, yeah. whatever. Like that is so... Like literally life changing. It's a yeah. game changer oh, bro. to channel My that. My mental and, health is jujitsu. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, it's mental <laughs> yeah. health. All of it. Like, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. It, it, it literally makes you feel more like a grounded, centered man. Absolutely. And while I'm there, I'm not like, oh, I'm gonna. I'm no. like, we and fucking with people. <laughs> yeah. I'm like choking them out. Like, yeah. Come on, give me that. Give me that. Yeah. I'm playing yeah. around. Totally. And there's there's so much there's so much release there. There's play. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you find that. Well, not you find, but I found that a lot of people who are adept fighters or martial artists, even if they start off with something to prove, eventually they get to the space of not needing to prove it, yep. right? And then, you know, like I think Jordan Peterson says, like a weak man is a dangerous man, yes. right? You know, yep. a dangerous man is, is a, is a, is a yeah. safe man or whatever. You should be dangerous and, you should, and have it under exactly. control. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And uh, like be a, better to be a warrior in the garden than a gardener in the war, yes. right? And yeah, man, you know... <sighs> As we talk about this, it lights me up, and it also is just like, damn, there's a lot of work to do. <laughs> you know, it's like I love I know, it because we're like we're like getting in all these places, yeah. like holy shit, that's a lot to build, mm-hmm. and what a beautiful life to live, what a beautiful time to be in. Yeah. You know, to 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 be weaved throughout our life, yeah, to get to this space where we're like doing this work, yeah, and to understand this is a blessing, yeah, and it's also like, okay, well, what this an is the thing. Huh? Life, I've, I've this is where I've landed recently. Mm-hmm. How I show up, life, my life is about staying power. Mm. How well can I stay in a situation? Mm. How well can I stay in a moment? Yeah. And that's intimacy, that's anger, that's mm-hmm. uh, discomfort, that's rage, that's annoyance, irritability, victim. How, how well yeah. can I hold a place that does not feel like it feels like I kind of want to run? Mm. And so doing things like jujitsu yeah. and martial arts and yeah. sitting in a cold tub and meditating and you know, the practices of staying for one more minute, yeah. 30 more seconds, yeah. five more minutes, staying in something when you want to leave. Yeah, the discomfort. To, that's the capacity. Yeah. Yeah. How Agreed. well can I stay with something Agreed. in my life? Business, love, money, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. That's where the relationships happen is in the staying mm-hmm. power. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that. And, and incomplete agreements of choosing to, there's a difference between being, you know, uh, just masochistic and being like oh i need to keep pushing past the limit that makes sense and then you get sick or injured and you can't show up in the ways that you need to and there's another point of being able to appropriately justifiably and safely push the limits of what your capacity is yeah in order to then know like oh i've been there i can go there and more yeah um Stopping just short of David Goggins. (laughs) (laughs) You you said it. I usually bring him up because it's like, David's funny because 
he goes so hard yeah. and it works for some people uh-huh. maybe, but it's also just like, you know, for some people's, you know, their issue is getting an appropriate balance of rest. Yeah. You know, like uh, for me, my biggest thing is not getting appropriate rest because if I don't get appropriate rest, I won't crave the right foods and then I don't have the energy to do the things uh-huh. and then I get injured or something happens. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like, if there could be a David Goggins for sleep, that's my guy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, like, you know, uh, and he is like that. I'm not saying that. He, he's like, he would tell you not well, to be on your phone or to yeah. do something. But um, sometimes yeah. it's not about just fucking go hard. Yeah, go hard sometimes it's like, yeah. hey, try to reframe and realign yeah. being going hard with like, hey, actually finding that space and being okay with the surrender. Yeah. You know? Totally. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm all about like every once in a while channel, channel your own David Goggins. But 100%. For yeah, the yeah. most part, that's not my approach. It just approach right. doesn't work for me. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, even though mad respect. Totally. Um, but yeah, you know, I'd love to ask you in regards to relationships, yeah. right? Because this is this is the stuff you do. There's always going to, like, no one's perfect. There's always going to be, quote unquote, shortcomings with mm-hmm. any individual, right? And yet, when it comes to agreements and boundaries, right? Like, when someone is in a place of struggle with holding boundaries mm-hmm. and agreements with more so in the sense of holding boundaries in themselves and then holding agreements within the relationship. Yeah. And wanting to do that and yet sabotaging. Where do you find is is a solution in that and or, you know, because I feel like that's somewhat analogous to our society as well. It's like microcosm, macrocosm, right? Yeah. Yeah. What what do you have to say there? Yeah. Um, I, I think that there's one thing you can that it can anchor in all that is yeah. standards. Right. I believe personal standards. Like mm-hmm. when you can really anchor into your values and your standards. Mm-hmm. That that essentially creates a lot of boundaries without mm. having to say because ba- the thing about boundaries for me is that they're n- like ninety percent retroactive. Mm. Oh, you crossed a boundary that I hadn't set yet, but now I'm going to set that boundary. So, you, but I'm still going to be mad at you for crossing it that you didn't know right. was there. Right. And so a lot of times, bound that's where boundaries get wishy washy is because they yeah. come out of a conflict or they come out of a pain point. Mm. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like if you have standards, like you know, like one of my values is honesty, one of my values yeah. is generosity. Like you yeah. know, the standard is what's 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 my embodiment of honesty? What's my and that teaches people and informs people mm. how to be around you. Mm. It's like okay, if I want to hang out with Sean, yeah. you know, it's going to be an integrity. Like yeah. I got to be in my integrity if you, if I'm going to be mm. his friend, his lover, whatever it is. Yeah, and so. That and that right there will create boundaries in itself, and then you get to, set, to establish mm. these agreements. Now, the thing about agreements is you have to know yourself, yeah, in order to create a solid agreement, right? So, if you're getting in a relationship and you're not sure about what a need is or what a desire is or what you even um, expect out of a lover or a mm. partner, yeah, is you're gonna your agreements are gonna be a little bit soft and wishy washy, mm. and then they're gonna, yeah. you, and then there's that's when resentment will creep in because like, oh, I had this agreement that I didn't really have myself, but I, I was kind of holding you to it, and so. Uh, practices on that is you know know thyself. That's mm. the one. Yeah. Uh, keep promises to yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the energy, the, the integrity energy, or the energy of um, sol- this is solid. And I'll speak to men on this: is that yeah, you know, the container of the relationship is mm-hmm. the man's responsibility. That's mm-hmm. the frame. Yeah. And so if you're out of integrity in a way that, and that's within that is culture. Right. So if you're out of integrity in a way of, that you want to see honesty in the relationship, and you're out of integrity with honesty. There's going to be you're going to feel very resentful and boundaries crossed because you haven't really set a strong container. Mm. And mm. so when it comes down to that, it is where in your life first mm. do you get to anchor in and then radiate out, be a beacon for that yeah. in your relationship. And so one thing is is that um, sit down at the very beginning or relationships. Like it's never too soon to have these conversations. Everyone wants right. to like wait and like oh when like, when I have feelings, then I'll have these conversations. Right. Like when you have feelings, then things. Then if you haven't had these conversations yet or you don't know yet, right. you know it's the if then or if when. Yeah. Conversation and so have these conversations right off the bat and get mm. clear before you go in. Right. Like this is the thing. Like what are you doing to get ready for a relationship? Is know thyself. Mm-hmm. Get clear about what you desire, what you want, and be ready for the unknown. Be ready mm-hmm. for it to be un- not ready. Yeah. And then have these things like, okay, in this relationship, what, what are some needs that you have? What are the needs that I have? Mm-hmm. What am I committed to to meet you at your needs? What, do, what, do, what would I like to see from you? Yeah. Have these conversations so that there's never a point where it's a question. Yeah, because within within the the question is where the resentment picks up and where the boundaries get crossed, agreements get broken. Right. Agreed. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, <clears throat> <clears throat> and you know, it's funny, like. I'm in complete agreement, and I've talked about it a bit myself in the sense of, as a male myself, being in the space of putting more responsibility on the man. Like, Mm -hmm. for instance, I used to be like, 
you know, how come, you know, us men are doing this men's work and stuff? Like, how come there isn't a women's work, you know, organization that is kind of meeting us there? Uh -huh. And then being like, oh, you know, putting the responsibility on them. It's like, no, actually, when I think about it, like, there would not be an OnlyFans if men were not supporting it. Like, there's all these things that would not exist yeah. without the support of weak men. Uh -huh. And and a lot of people, especially in today's society, would be like, oh, so the man has to be like all this, uh -huh. this whole narrative. And, yeah. and, and outside of that, though, just to come back to it, like truly, at least what, with what we're talking about in this, you know, monogamous heterosexual type of relationship uh -huh. or something like that, like, yeah. Or whatever it is, whatever, what, where, whoever is alpha or, or whoever is in that space of creating that container. Uh -huh. I'm in complete agreement that the standards need to be upheld. And if, if one is not, if the person who's holding the, the container and who is the leader yeah. is not holding a container of honesty and integrity, uh -huh. then that would most likely ripple out and become something where it becomes sabotaged. Totally. Right? So, yeah. Yeah. And I think with, within that, too, you have to honor the feminine strength and the masculine strength. Yeah. Okay, so masculine is the space, the, mm -hmm. the structure, the containment, mm -hmm. the, the boundaries, the, the, yeah. the outside, the, the bigger picture of the relationship. Right. Then let's honor that the feminine yeah. is the emotional anchor in the relationship. The feminine gets mm -hmm. to lead in the emotional, in the love, in the, in mm -hmm. the depth almost. Mm -hmm. But the, and it doesn't absolve the man from leadership. It right. doesn't say, like, that's on you. Like, yeah. okay, you want to have a conversation? Like, fine, bring it up. Like, yeah, yeah. The, the masculine energetics of mm -hmm. this is like, is creating a space where the woman doesn't feel like too much, mm -hmm. doesn't feel like she's needy, mm -hmm. like all these core feminine wounds that exist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the masculine leadership, like understanding that the feminine, like the feminine's going to see more things emotionally, love, depth, energetically right. than the man is. Yeah. But the man's job is to create that space where that gets to be expressed. Because mm -hmm. if the woman feels shut down there, legs close up, heart closes up, the whole mm -hmm. thing. And so as the, the masculine leadership is the space creation, the feminine leadership is, I see something that you don't, are you, let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. Let's have these conversations. Let's do an intimacy practice, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But the masculine's job is that I'm creating the space for you to fully be expressed and fully exist and to step into your role as the, as the feminine leader in, mm -hmm. this, in this environment. Mm -hmm. In response to that, or, or a yeah. question in response to that, like for, for men who don't feel safe to go into those spaces of surrender to the feminine, uh -huh. um, or want to do a tantra thing, yeah. or something like that. Like, what what do you what do you say to that in regards to how to still maintain a healthy dynamic? Or yeah, what 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 comes up for you there? Um, first thing that came up was um, there was something unspoken before the relationship got to that point. Mm. Whereas the man, maybe the woman was holding it in that she was wanting to go down the tantra path, and the man right. was holding it in that that's that's a no for him. Right, and so then it comes to the point where the woman's Unspoken like, "I want to do this," and the man's like, "I never, I don't." And so now we're six months in, and we're like, "We right. never had this conversation." Right, and, th and then so there's nuance here within that is okay. Mm -hmm. How do we get to have this conversation now? And so the man gets to look at like, "What's my resistance?" And the woman gets to look at, um, "What's my need?" Right, and not to say either are bad or good. Yeah, it's just that the man, <clears throat> the man most likely in that moment would have some sort of. Um, intimacy issue, mm -hmm. some sort of um, shame, probably a lot of shame. Yeah, like within sex, there's so much shame for right. men, you know, or like, just expression, expression, especially yeah. for for males in general. Yeah, right. Yeah, and so that Great. what it is, if the man is triggered by that, mm -hmm. that's the invitation to like, okay, what's 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 there for me? Yeah, like I'm what is that making I'm, you feel about yourself. Like, right, what's going probably on? feel yeah. like tantra is like this big orgasmic long sexual thing <laughs> that we make it up to be, <laughs> which is yeah. not. And the man's like, I'm, there's no way I can meet. There's no way I can meet you there. So I'm going right. to shut down and back off, and maybe check right. out, maybe even break up with you, because right. I feel shame that I can't meet you where you need to be met. Right. And so that man, if he's done the work, yeah, can lean in and say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to. This is my woman, and I love her, and mm -hmm. I want to, I want to be a stand for her and her needs and her expression. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to look at my shit and show up and lean into that shame, mm -hmm. lean into that thing because I know on the other side of it, it's a breakthrough. Yeah. Whereas the man that hasn't done the work so much will probably recoil and back out of the relationship, close his heart. Closes energy. Mm. I love that. And you had said there were like two things. You had said, what do I need in, in regards to the woman? Like what yeah. does the woman need and 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 what's there for the guy or whatnot? But yeah. All, so like yeah. essentially like um I think what I said was that the like it's the the man so the man's like, Oh shit, no, I, I can't go there. Like yeah. that's that's an invitation for him to look at why. 
Right. Why why am I keeping myself small or why am I not willing to go there? Right. Um what 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 do I not understand about this situation? Right. Like what do I not understand about tantra or the feminine expression? Right. Like where where am I feeling overwhelmed because I, I I've not talked to a man yet that does mm-hmm. not fear letting his woman down in some way. Mm-hmm. Financially, right. emotionally, sexually, mm-hmm. physically, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. It's something that lives within us as men is we are not enough. We're never going to be able to fully fulfill it. Right. And so doing the work to get yourself to the point where you 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 can hold that mm-hmm. and not shut her away, not yeah. let it like pull you back down. Right. Yeah. And and one of the reasons why I was asking about those those two concepts or something because because they they hit hard. Similarly to the other ones that you brought up earlier in regards to like basically you know doing a clearing like a charge clearing mm-hmm. like these types of things and and as you said it, I was like, oh yeah, that's a question. <laughs> that, like that that's how that's how that whole situation would be mediated appropriately. Mm-hmm. Um, and yet in the moments when the tensions are high when the emotions are high and we do not have these tools and and if one person if one person's holding this state of consciousness yep. that's able to be like hey let's hold on let's have this process and yeah. the other one's just disgruntled like no i i, yeah. I don't want to do you know it's like that's when all of a sudden it turns eventually this person might get broken down and they yeah. both start playing in this lower realm yep right and so what do you say like not to say that you should have the solution or have the solution, but how do we end up getting to that space where individuals have the tools within their waking moment-to-moment yep. relationships outside of the space of having the opportunity for mediation in real yeah. time? To come to that space of vulnerability, to come to that space of empowerment and leadership mm-hmm. and being able to process themselves. Yeah, um, to process themselves like within that yeah. point of rupture. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's... Uh, it's a moment of pause. It really, it really is. Mm. Like, there's no like the thing that you need to do mm. is have this capacity and understand too. Like, so both these people mm. and this is a lot of relationships yeah. have established a paradigm of um, conflict is our way of communicating. Conflict is our way of mattering to each other. Mm. This comes from childhood mirroring of, of mm. parents of like somehow society, whatever it is, yeah. telling us that in order to have a meaningful relationship, we have to go through something really hard or fight mm. or uh, this is how we communicate. And a lot, a lot of people that tend to fight a lot in relationships had mm. um, a very a neglectful childhood. Mm-hmm. And so the, uh, the, the way that they would get attention or the way that they would matter mm. um, is to create chaos, to create, a, create some sort of rupture in the family unit. So therefore, if they're getting neglected, they you know throw a ball and break a piece of glass, right. break a plate. Right. And like, oh, look, they're paying attention to me. Yeah, because yeah. I created a problem. Right. And so people take that with them into relationships. The the mm. the, the, the the adult relationships will play out our childhood wounds one hundred percent of the time. Right. Every time. Yeah. And so the more that we've worked on that, so in that moment when you recognize that mm. um, there's the the one thing that I've the practice that I have found the most resonance with mm-hmm. is the you know, Mago dialogue or nonviolent communication, which is like, okay, so the woman gets really triggered and she's really, really high energy, really activated. Mm-hmm. And the man wants to come back and just throw swords. Like mm-hmm. really, really wants to like, and that's, yeah. that's the thing. Both people bring out their weapons. We're here. Yeah. We're, we're fighting. Yeah. We got our swords. It's putting the swords down and saying, backing off a second, babe, I see you're activated. Mm-hmm. Like, I would love to know more about what your experience is right now. Mm-hmm. And just and then because the woman like the man has the thing about like let's get to the end of this real quick let's get to yeah. the end like I got my sword out yeah. we're going to we're going to battle here but we're going to get to a solution in a hurry yeah yeah and the woman is no no I want to be mad or I want to be hurt or I want to be in this experience long enough mm-hmm. that it moves through my body yeah this is another area where the feminine can be a little bit of a leader is like allow us to be in this experience. Mm. so that it moves through us and doesn't stick in us. Right, allow us to feel. Allow us to feel, allow us to express, allow us to be seen, witnessed, all the things. Mm. And so the man can say, just like, listen, like, I see your act. Like I would love to know what was your experience of the whatever the trigger was. Yeah. Like what 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 did it trigger in you? How did it make you feel? You know, please tell me like what your experience of this moment is right now. What what are you not getting? Like ask the questions that you know Mm -hmm. are going to bring this experience out. And this is staying power, back to staying power. How long can I stay in this? Mm. And the longer you can stay in it and not become the oh, the activated swords out male. Yeah. And be the the holding space, the the kind, and mm. just ask her like she she expresses a five minute mm. rant or dialogue about her yeah. experience. And it's like, okay, babe, and is there anything else there? Does that feel complete? And just keep asking. And like mm. just until she says I am complete, that's it. And then you can say you can even offer like what I would love to have share my experience of that with you too, 
or mm. just like open and bring the dialogue back to uh, the witnessing, the seeing, the hearing, as opposed to because in that moment of the conflict, no one's hearing each other. Right. It's all like I have something to say, and I'm going to wait till you're done, but I'm still going to say the thing I saw, I thought five minutes ago that's probably no longer relevant. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I hear that, and I guess what what comes up for me, and and this is obviously like a very personal space for me. I feel like in most cases that feels okay, but what if in the case, whether it's the man or the woman does mm-hmm. something wrong, I guess in, in whatever case, ultimately, if one wants to be the most effective, like what you're talking about is the most effective. Right. So it's kind of just like, yeah. it doesn't matter who's necessarily right or wrong in the moment. It's like the, the motions need to move. Mm-hmm. The feelings need to be felt. Yeah. And in order to try to demand for the individual to come to a space of reasoning, if they are in those feelings or emotional, is kind of dumb. Mm-hmm. Is that is that basically it? Right? Yeah. Like, because for me, as someone who's very fair, yeah, right. I'm 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 Libra in a lot in in a lot of planets <laughs> and or in a lot of my chart, and and I'm all about like fairness, mm-hmm. right? Like, if I'm sharing a meal with someone, even if I'm really hungry. I'll eat my half really fast, but I leave half. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like that. I'm like that. And like if I ever you know, share a plate with my partner or whatever, I'm just like, I already eat the, the half. And I'm like, oh, man, I'm so hungry, but I'm just leaving it for So altruistic. Me. Well, I mean, you know, it's just fair. It's fair. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. Um, but point being, yeah. the thing that at least for me drives me wild is when I am right and they are wrong. Yeah. And then having to deal with holding that space. And, and, and that's a lesson in patience for me, mm-hmm. but ultimately like what you're talking about is like, so th- they're, yeah. they're not going to understand that if, if it's, if it's true that you're right yeah. and they're wrong, yeah. they're not going to understand their wrongness until they experience their wrongness. Right. So you telling them you're wrong, being, like all that's doing is uh, their walls are up, their defenses are up. Yeah. And usually I don't say you're wrong, but it'll be like, dude, this is, this happened. Yeah. Like a, a big, a big theme that would play out is like. They do something uncool or something that that crosses boundaries or stand like standards, like things mm-hmm. that I've already brought forth. I get upset about it. Then she's upset the fact that I'm upset. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like yeah. that makes no fucking yeah. sense at all. And you know, and um, here's the deal: like sometimes yeah. these things are going to happen yeah. in relationships. Like it's unavoidable. The fact, the the point is, is like how well do you repair after conflict? Mm. You know, so you so you're like okay, ideally, yes, we get to drop into the nonviolent communication and the amalgam dialogue, and we get to yep. hear each other and right. hold space for each other. That's ideal. Mm-hmm. And if that can happen, eighty five percent of the time, you're probably pretty good. Yeah. And then the other fifteen percent of the time, there's going to be moments mm. when you're fucking heated mm. and like you're gonna you're gonna be in that activated state going the yelling at each other or you're yeah. right i'm wrong whatever it is yeah so that, that happens great right then what's the what's the repair process afterwards mm-hmm. do we come to an agreement and say you know uh, do we acknowledge like i'm not going anywhere you know i'm, I'm all in i love you I, mm-hmm. I and i understand that we're gonna go through these things and these are gonna happen What's our repair practice after this? Do we mm-hmm. do we go to a date? Do we go on a date? Do we hold each other? Do we cuddle? Do we have is there intimacy time? Like mm-hmm. what is after that happens? Because it's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. Acknowledge that it happened. And then maybe after that you can share in a more conscious or not in a conscious, calm way. Mm-hmm. About like, you know, like that experience was, was like I would love to share with you the experience of that. Like now that we're on the other side of it, yeah. And kind of share like more about what was coming up for me. And that's the repair practice. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Because that way, you you allow space for that human thing to exist, right. that human yeah. like in the heat of the moment thing to exist, and know that there's safety on the other side of it. Mm. That will allow more of an expression during it as well. Mm. You know what I love about this? It kind of circles back to what we were talking about in the very beginning, which is being able to have oversight over the body, the the mind, like the actual beingness, like yeah. doing what it does. And it's so easy to be in the thick of the emotions of. Anger or rage or sabotage or yeah. or, or, or uh, betrayal, right? Yeah, all these things, and, and and not be in that space of like seeing like, oh wow, I'm I'm doing this. I feel like that's the one place, at least for myself, I'll say mm-hmm. that I feel like I get overtaken sometimes. Yeah, and at the end of the day, like you're saying, like whether it's the repair practice or whether it's being able to like process the thing in the actual heat of the moment, mm-hmm. being able to be like. Okay, I don't want to go through this whole argument for however long, however yeah. many, like 20, yeah. 30, 40 minutes, whatever the heck, like a charge clearing here would actually yeah. help. Okay, let's take some space, let's take some time, let's come back and do a charge clearing. Yeah. Like, what do I really want? Because yeah. if I am 
if I am not doing that, even though it may seem odd, maybe, yep. and, and this is something that I think is pretty common knowledge now, and I, I wrote in the book, but I'm pretty sure a lot of people know that the things that we have not done before uh, are, the, we don't get a positive dopamine response from them, right? Mm. So when we choose to go outside of our subconscious programming, which is like 95% of our life, yep. and do something and make a conscious decision outside of that, it yeah. will feel like absolute danger. Yep. It will feel like, hey, this is wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. Even though if everything else that we know and do is completely destructive, that will feel wrong. Yep. And so for one, it's knowing that. Second, it's embracing it. And third, it's actually proactively doing it. And in those moments, I have to say, and this is fun for me to take ownership of, is that like, if I'm not choosing to do that, not only am I not choosing to go towards discomfort, I'm not choosing to be effective. Uh -huh. And I'm also choosing to experience that fucked up thing. Because yes. just because that situation has arisen with my partner, family member, whatever, am I handling it in the way with the tools that I have to be the most effective in yeah. resolving it with the least amount of damage to myself? Yeah. If not, I'm saying yes to that thing. Yeah. Which, yeah. no matter what, and it's absolutely hundred percent true. Like yeah. the experiencing is evidence of wanting. Yeah. So like you have the experience of mm. a fight, and, if, and it, it maybe it feels is evidence of wanting. Yeah. So oh. if you're experiencing something, it means there's yeah. a part of you, subconscious probably, mm. that chose that thing. Mm. Like maybe yeah. there's a fight with your girlfriend or whatever it is, yeah. and it has nothing to do with the fight with your girlfriend. But there's a part of you that wanted to be seen in some type of way. So you're like, oh, you didn't take out your trash or whatever it is. Right. Like you pick a thing. Yeah, and really, what it is is there's something underneath that that was like I wanted to be seen. I wanted to have a, I wanted to make up a reason to express a feeling that I hadn't expressed yet. So I'm gonna create a fight, and then makes it more appropriate to create that mm -hmm. to express that feeling. Mm -hmm. It can go any kind of way. Right, there's like, so true. There's solid layers to it. So true. And mm -hmm. always going back to, um, how is this serving me? Yeah. Like, what is this doing for me? Yeah. And then once yeah. you recognize how it's serving or what's doing for you, then you can say, okay, do I choose this or do I not? Hmm. Wow, there's a great book about that uh, concept called Existential Kink. Mm. <laughs> it, it, yeah, <laughs> so this this woman was like literally yeah. like into the BDSM world, and she's like, you know, <laughs> like there's things in life yeah. that are like not so much like ropes and all that stuff, but there's like things that like nip like hot wax on nipples, like <laughs> discomfort, right, and yeah. choice. <laughs> so there's things in life like addiction, yeah. discomfort, and choice. Yeah, conflict and relationship, discomfort and choice, like. So God true. is a kinky motherfucker, is what she says yes. in the book. <laughs> and so it's it's based on the Carl Jung quote of that, you know, um, until you make the unconscious conscious, <laughs> it will it will run your life and you will call it fate. And so bringing all the mm. bringing this, what you just talked about, mm -hmm. bringing the unconscious to the conscious, and, yeah. and then becoming now now it's into the five percent where you can actually do something about right, it. Right, right, and it starts becoming larger than five percent. I love that. Yeah, I love that because, yeah, you know, for one, this is illuminating me to two spaces that I can like and that are alive with me as well recently mm -hmm. and spaces that I can refine and align in my life. Um, and also gives me compassion, awareness, also like a, a, a real life example of coming back to how maybe I used to be and what I see in other people in society as well, because I used to be that revolutionary mm. that, that, you know, the, the rebel, you know, that's like, oh, these the big governments to blame. This is to blame. Yeah. Fight the power. Yeah. Da 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 da. Um, rich people, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Creating jobs and da, da, da. You know, not to say that you know business capitalism can't be aligned appropriately in a way that is harmonious with nature and integrous and stuff. But um, yeah, you know, just like the professional victim and being so thick in the in the in the in the mud of being quote unquote triggered or mm -hmm. being in that space of of anger, feeling injustice and feeling that passion wash over that literally takes over the self. Yeah. And and reasoning, sound reasoning and or just being as effective as one could be kind of goes out the window because it's like, no, I want to feel this. Yeah. This feeling's here and I don't have a way to process it and <clears throat> or move it mm -hmm. in a way that's more effective. Or I'm afraid of choosing that because that feeling of choosing doing it effectively and appropriately makes me feel scared and yeah. it feels dangerous. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather just tantrum. Yeah. Because I did that as a kid. Yeah. Because actually <laughs> just or whatever, calmly, expre you know? calmly expressing what I'm feeling doesn't feel like right. enough. Right. It doesn't, feel, it doesn't feed my ego. Right, right. Yeah. So well, like, my ego yeah. wants to continue fighting and continue throwing arrows at you. Yeah. But what do you need in this moment? Mm. Dude. That's the fucking like, yeah. swallow your fucking tongue and just be like, I can continue down this fight road for hours, yeah. days, 
Yeah, maybe yeah. I can ask her what she needs right now mm. and put an end to this. Mm. And and mm. and then and trust that in the end I yeah. will get to express what I'm feeling as well. Yeah. Mm. Agreed. Wow. Yeah, and and you know, tying this all back to microcosm, macrocosm society and stuff like that, and mm-hmm. tying it back to boundaries. Yeah. Right. And not to say that this it, it can very well play out in in romantic relationships too, but um, like I was just saying about like the tantruming, you know, what I'm seeing in in the world with a lot of these Gen Z and like the younger people and these revolutionaries these days who are just fighting for stuff is like literally adults who are emotionally unregulated in tantrum. Uh-huh. And when I was growing up, I started to see a new a new phase of people having kids and just allowing them to tantrum. Yeah, and feeling like, and and because of the fact that maybe there was so much father archetype wounding yep. and masculine wounding where it was like, let's do the opposite of that. Mm-hmm. Let's go the complete polar extreme where they have no boundaries. Yeah. We don't tell them no, uh-huh. you know, and we basically create them into somewhat sociopathic fucking nightmares, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, and yeah, so what's interesting now is like, you know, I have, I don't, I haven't really dealt with a lot of people like that, but I'm seeing that, you know, in society mm-hmm. and it's like, what we're talking about. It's like, how do you get through to individuals like that? I don't know. I mean, once again, it's being effective. It's like yeah, it's saying things the way that you're saying. And yet, you know, once again, I feel like we're being, we're being shown our decision-making in action right yeah. now um, throughout the years. And, and we're finding more of an alignment in regards to how we operate with boundaries, how we operate within our standards, you know, who we are as, yeah. as divine sovereign individuals and like mm-hmm. what power and capacity we do hold and yeah. can hold. And then how to be effective, you know? Um, one thing that I'd love to, to throw your way as well is like the reframing of words. <laughs> because, you know, for instance, I'll just say in my relationship as well, like the similarly to what's going on in society, like, oh, don't say this word because it triggers me. It's like, uh-huh. reframe the word within your, your being because yeah. I might not be thinking the same thing as yeah. you. Just because you have a specific connotation with something yep. does not mean that I have to change my reality, mm-hmm. right? And and nor do I have to for you, right? Or vice versa. But ultimately, like it's up to us to reframe yeah. the things that cause us pain or harm because we're the only ones that can do that. Otherwise, we just set ourselves up for yeah. the expectation of being brittle and right. potentially wounded. Right. right? It's. It, I think that I love this, and I think there's like. Um, Someone like that has a food addiction, for example. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like alcohol addiction, cocaine addiction, like that's yeah. essentially easy because you can just cut that out of your life. Right. You can't cut out food. You can't cut so out true. food. <laughs> so I need to somehow relate myself yeah. to like what it means mm. to eat food mm. in that. Mm. And like some people like it's like fear of driving. Some people there's so many things yeah. out there yeah. that are necessary. Mm. And that if we're going to be happy and alive, mm. we have to somehow cultivate a different relationship with them. Words can be one of them. Experiences right. can be another one. And so as we begin to understand what we need and what, what things and like the, the, the root of the, like the trigger, like if someone mm. gets triggered by a word, they're actually just like, they may, maybe they just like to get triggered. <laughs> maybe some people like to get triggered. Some people, totally. Yeah. Some people are looking, go out seeking for triggers and, and they will find them anywhere. Yeah. yeah. And what is that energy too? Yeah. That energy is sexual energy. Oh, fuck yes. It's unutilized sexual yeah. creative energy. Yeah. That's the same as the rage. Right. It's, exactly. It's, it's, the, it's this so something so powerful with yeah. inside of us that we yeah. have no idea how to relate to it or hold it. Yeah. So we're going to pick a nice controllable thing. Right. Trigger. Yeah. Like it might suck. Like I might, I might tell you right now, I hate mm. to be triggered. I might walk outside and be like, fucking LA. <laughs> you know? yeah, like, yeah. God, it triggers me every time God, I'm here. so much traffic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> because I'm, pr- yeah. I'm choosing a familiar, predictable hell mm. over an unfamiliar heaven, which yeah. is like the capacity or the, like looking at the, now I go outside and it's like, oh, the palm trees and the beach right there. Like, it's amazing. Like yeah. I can choose that shift. Right. But yeah. some people just love, to, love the predictability mm. of a familiar hell. Mm. And so they keep choosing it. Mm. And so, it can, and then they'll find any which way to yeah. manifest that that trigger, that hell, that whatever it is. Mm-hmm. It could be words, it could be relationships. Like, babe, right. I hate when you say this to me. Babe, I've been saying that for six months, and and all of a sudden now you say something. Like, it, right. it can go any kind of way. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's really about like, okay, let's talk about like, what's the root of that? Like, why mm. is that there? Let's break it down. Mm. Mm. Wow. Yeah, bro. Shoot. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's. It's something that obviously for us is very clear. Yeah. And yet 
the road to getting there is is going to be a challenging one. I mean, yeah. and so I guess this leads me me to this point. I'm surprised I didn't talk about it in the last podcast. I almost talk about it in every one. I feel like the biggest hurdle for like the hurdle for us to get to this space. Like obviously there's there's apparent value here, pretty mm-hmm. obvious value. Yeah. And yet for the pessimist, for the atheist, for the whatever it is to just mm-hmm. be like who the, who the fuck cares? Why does it matter? Yeah. It's like okay. All right, all right, it's it's easy for the challenge to be more, to show up more, to do all these things. It's easy to dismiss or or or, or challenge that, right? And when it comes to sovereignty, when it comes to understanding that we have the like sovereign, sovereign meaning wielding ultimate power, we have the power of we could kill puppies, you know, we could start a war, <laughs> yeah. we could heal people, we could do all <clears throat> sorts of things, right? So we have this capacity. We have the invitation to do whatever we want. Mm-hmm. And yet there also are consequences to those things, right? But yeah. we're responsible in how we perceive and respond to our reality in every moment. And any time we can perceive our reality to be beneficial and leading towards something beneficial and therefore be optimistic and therefore show up in the best way, mm-hmm. or we can choose to be pessimistic in the face of tragedy or even in, in you know, um, triumph or, or, or something good like, like you did, right? Mm-hmm. In either case... I feel like in order for us to build value or at least for us to bring all of that stuff forward in a way where it makes sense or it's just like, oh, it makes sense that we should do that. At least for me, is to understand when I say like divine sovereign being, and I know these are, you know, new agey words and shit like this, but for me, what really flipped things on its head is to think about how humanity, humans, right? We always want our children to be better than us. Mm. We always want our children to be more loved than we were. Mm -hmm. We want to give them a better life. We want them to be the progression of us. That is literally the loving nature of a sound parent. Anyone else who doesn't do that is fucked up in some way. But that is like kind of like the baseline. And yet, within religious doctrine, um, specifically like in the dogmatic Christianic religions and in some others, there's this, this like bowing of the head of God, like, oh, I cannot be more than, I am less than, I am sinner. I am, mm-hmm. and, and I don't know if that's, that can, we can dig that all the way back to ancient Sumerian times where there's these, these votive statues where they're just yep. big eyed and, you know, they yep. talk about us being spliced and shit. I don't know. But point being <laughs> inherent in our DNA is this unworthiness gene. Like it's literally within our codons of our genetics yeah. where so many people, regardless of where you come from, have this kind of like, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a person, but I, I, I'm, you know, like even who we are as an identity becomes very shrouded in like being less than. Yeah. And yes, we have we have capacities in these bodies that are limited, and that's kind of the beauty of this reality. And yet, like the capacity of what we're able to do with what we have is like the artistic creations of creation and destruction are like yeah. near infinite. <laughs> and and so with that understanding that. No, your your divine parent, God, creator, whatever, universe, source, whatever, doesn't want you to be less than. Or it's not mm-hmm. like, oh, never think that. Shame on you. I No, what if the divine parent wants the same for you as the human parent wants for their kids? Mm-hmm. Whoa. Now, <laughs> now your divine parent is rooting for you, yeah. loving you yeah. unconditionally, even as yeah. you fuck up, and wanting you to be more. Yeah. Be, the, be the offspring. Be the progression, the, the wellspring of them to bring forth something and to create and then it becomes like, oh, shoot, not only am I worthy enough, I'm so worthy that I have responsibility that I can either show up to or not. And that's a very big difference than being like, oh, everything's already against me. Uh-huh. Like, there's like, oh, I'll have faith. Please, please, oh, nothing's going to go my way, you know? Uh-huh. And I completely get, like, I was in there last last week <laughs> feeling like, oh, fuck, like, is this going to happen? Like yeah. feeling doubtful. I'm not saying those feelings don't exist, even yeah. if these concepts are known. Yeah. Yeah. But if we build them into the fabric of society and we recognize how foolish perhaps the other one is, yeah. then how can we be programmed as, as our youth grow up so that they don't have to deal with the baggage that we have? So that then all of these tools of charge clearing, of, of being mm-hmm. able to communicate appropriately, yeah. being able to own our you know, our, our decisions and our emotional regulation and all these things. How does that come forward so much more effortlessly and, and supported? You yeah. Know? So it's a lot of work, but at, yeah. What, what do you have to say about that specifically? That piece? Yeah. I, like you said, I mean, it's, it, it, we've come, we've established so much of the other 
Yeah. For just centuries. Yeah. Yeah. Just so much time. Right. And I, I mean, I, I feel like there is a shift happening. Like there's a totally. lot of conscious parents doing a really great job with conscious kids. Mm-hmm. And within all that, mm-hmm. like there's part of the human experience that we can't ever protect or change or mm-hmm. shift out of. And what we can do is create humans, children, teenagers, young adults yeah. that have more of that sovereign idea. Not, and not so much of like, I'm a sovereign being, like I can do life on my own, but like right. I'm a sovereign being in that um, I'm having my own experience. Right. And, yeah, I'm yeah. Gonna, and, I, and I have tools yeah. that, that a lot of times, like Gen X maybe didn't get, or even like, you know, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, we didn't yeah. get yeah, yeah. tools, no, like consciousness tools. Discovered it as adults. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is, I wish I, I fucking love because right. I got, we got both experiences. Totally. Which is fucking amazing. <laughs> Yo, 90s were dope, dude. <laughs> dude. 80s, 90s, yeah. 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 drinking out of a water hose. Yeah. Like, <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Free range parenting. Yeah. Oh my like, God. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. It's good. Bro. It was fun. It's, it was such yeah. a such wild times. So the thing is, is that um, I think within that, we get to teach the most important thing is that we get to teach mm-hmm. our kids um, the consciousness skills, the yeah. human skills to say, I'm going to, I, I, I might get anxiety. Mm-hmm. I might get, I might carry the story of unworthiness. Mm-hmm. And it's not to say like, to like, it's wrong or to rid ourselves of it, to get it yeah. out of our, out of our energy fields, mm-hmm. but to honor it and say like, okay, so instead of looking for because I'm going to say I'm unworthy, historically, let me just, let me find all the ways that I'm unworthy. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna I'm gonna look for evidence. Collect yeah. a file. Yeah. You know, like how maybe do we right. like get to shift to say like okay maybe how about I look at the ways that I am worthy? Because mm-hmm. like honestly even myself yeah. like yeah I slip into it like yeah, nothing's yeah. gonna work out for me I'm fucked like <laughs> rent can't pay rent like right, right, right. all these stories creep in and yeah. then something will happen I'm like oh cool <laughs> you know, it's like, oh finally just, I'm back to feeling yeah, good again yeah. you know? within 24 hours yeah, yeah like yeah. I could be panicking yeah. going to sleep and then the next right. one I wake up and be like oh I feel pretty good today yeah and, you know yeah. like and, and when we surrender mm-hmm. to God's plan spirit's plan whatever it is yeah and just know that like, get ourselves essentially out of the way right life becomes a lot easier now that is yeah. real fucking hard with yeah. the human ego 100% because we love how we love being in control we love yeah. being like we take being the creator as like you know I am relentlessly driving this car and there's yeah. no other way except my highway at this speed yeah. in this car going this direction. That's how it's going to all happen. Yeah. And then car breaks down, something happens. You got to slow down. Like you physically hurt your body. You get sick, yeah. you blow your knee out, like whatever, how you get cancer, like whatever yeah. happens, like, Oh, that's, that's not, that's not according to my plan. And then yeah. the other side of it is mm-hmm. something fucking magical. Yeah. Agreed. And so that, I think that knowing mm-hmm. of the deep tr- love, love uh, life is a trust fall. Yeah. Like how well do we just fall with it? Mm, mm, and you know, we're going to have landing spots and we yeah. land and just get up and okay. Nice. Where's the next trust fall? Like, and, yeah. and, and just know that like, we're always, you know, we will continue to breathe until we won't. And we will continue to live until we right. won't. And like yeah. within that, we get to just really, really drop into full surrender. Yeah. And it's, uh, there's a great quote is that, um, I can't control the wind, but I can adjust my sails. Mm. And so how do we adjust mm. our sails? Yeah. Like we are the captain of the ship, but yeah. we can't control the weather. Mm. And so within that, you know, we get to be adaptable. And that's the thing about capacity. That's the kids, like right. how adaptable can we make you? How resilient can we make you? Yeah. How, how much can we teach you mm-hmm. that when something does go wrong, yeah. that you can handle it? Right. And that means like an unworthiness story and whatever else. And a lot of that, it, I think it's just unavoidable. Is to have, and that's what we get yeah. back into the hundredth monkey thing. It's it's a collective thing, right? Agreed. That if we're gonna like we talk about, we spent like, lifetimes and centuries yeah. building it. Yeah, it's gonna take the same to get it out, and it may never get out. But at least right. we we can build a, a society and a human and a collective yeah. consciousness that can better hold things. Yeah, well, yeah, and you know, like the innovators, the early adopters, late adopters, laggers, right? Like yeah. there's a process; it doesn't yeah. happen overnight. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, once again, tying it back to like the technology that's been suppressed too and all the things. It's like, you know, it, it was it was so, it was something that I had to come to terms with, with like, hey, if I'm seeing all of these things as curses and I've seen all these things as like, oh, this is this is not a part of the divine plan. It's like, oh, oh wait, hold on. There's, there's hypocrisy there, right? <laughs> yeah. So so how in a way is this? You know, even, even in the Bible, there's certain things that the angels did that were like, whoa, that's what an angel's doing, yeah. right? And I feel like, if we allow for ourselves to not get so wrapped up in like, oh, well, this trauma unfolded. This is like, there's this lady who's actually getting really big on, on on YouTube or on Instagram right now, talking at a at a black conference and and talking about how you know the the 
child of a rapist should not be punished for because of their parent mm. because of what their parent did yeah and you know was saying some really harsh truths like you know none of the people in this room went through what our ancestors went through and none of these white people have were like are are they just like the rapists are they supposed to endure the same treatment that their like great grandfathers yep. went you know what <clears throat> i mean that doesn't mean that the things that happened didn't happen mm-hmm. right but also an eye for an eye makes the world go blind and like literally everyone's been in a place of slavery throughout yep. all points of time. And yeah, it's just it's it's a it's a fascinating thing when we choose to own our story and 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 really come to terms with the fact that like there's a way to honor the tragedy and the trauma and the suffering that has existed in the past mm-hmm. while also choosing to push forward in a space of creation. And potentially rectifying creation, yep. right? Like that is a more, once again, like we're talking about with being in a, in a relationship and what's the way to be effective in the communication of it? What's the way to utilize the pain and the suffering and the trauma effectively? Mm-hmm. What's the way to use that passion that gets felt in this, this surge of, you know, being, being upset about the pain that you feel for other people or yourself? Yeah. How can that sexual energy be utilized towards creating something? Right. Maybe something that that brings forth so much beauty and goodness that then we can see the blessing in it all. Yeah. Right? I mean, I think that's, yeah. uh, that's like the, I think that would be the best way to honor the, the tragedy and the circumstance of right? past. Yeah. Is like, not to like, to swallow in it and to live in it, but right. like, it's out of that came essentially you. Mm. You know, like there's yeah. something had to, had to go down and yeah. happen for something else to be birthed. Yeah. And now do we get, do we get to, yes, we get to honor that that was terrible and that happened. Right. And, how do we make the most of this this opportunity? Mm-hmm. Well, because honoring mm-hmm. the people that never maybe never had the opportunity to, to do this thing, to heal this way, to experience 100%. these things. Yeah. Like th- that's the that's the seven generations back, seven generation forward healing. Oh. The ancestral yeah. stuff. Yeah. It's like how do we honor the 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 four thousand and forty five people that came together over the ancestral math yeah. to get to this point to give you and me this opportunity to sit here at this table having this conversation. Yeah. This is honoring that oh. the land ancestors. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so that, and that doesn't mean that, and that means we honor the the pain, the the struggle, the yeah. sickness, the wars that it. they had to walk through yeah. to come together, to stay together, to be together, to create yeah. something and the else. Love, the love, all of like yeah. the heartbreak, all, all of, of it. it, all of it, <laughs> all of it gave us, like yeah. us too, and everyone, all yeah. eight billion people on this planet, this yeah. opportunity right now. Oh. Like we can we can choose to wallow and be angry and resentful of the tragedy, right? Okay. Yes, that that deserves That's to a exist. Choice. It's it's valid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And let's let's make the most of this opportunity. Right. Right. Agreed. That's what they would want. We are ancestors' wildest dreams. Right. Uh, uh, and oh. it's just like, whoo! Like it's it's, <laughs> a, it's so it's so easy to be caught up in the mundanity of this world yeah. and to be in these places where we're like, yeah. you know, some could say like we're complaining about what's going on, but it's like no, we're we're really finding finding. Finding resolve in what's happening, yeah. finding empowerment, finding finding courage, yeah. and and finding uh, solutions. But ultimately, what our ancestors have gone through. Like I, I found out just recently that me being like I got Kabuto, I got my last name tattooed on my back yeah. with my family crest, you uh-huh. know, and we're trying to find out about my great grandfather's lineage, uh-huh. you know. And I go to my grandfather's sister. And I'm asking her about it. She's like, you know, he didn't really talk much. And when he was working, when, you know, things were happening, he didn't really work on the farm. It was all mom. You know, it was all <laughs> mom. And I was like, what? And, and then she tells me stories of my great grandmother. And she was, she was betrothed to this person who was like a drunkard and mm-hmm. would beat the shit out of her. Mm-hmm. And on two different occasions, she ran away. And it took her two and a half days to run home over four cities to get back to her parents. Wow all beaten and shit like mm, yeah. <laughs> and then and then she ends up getting together with my grandfather um through like picture brides where they see pictures and uh-huh. like then she travels on the bottom of a boat with rats and shit oh, for man. like a month wow overseas could potentially die and get the boat sunk yeah. you know what i'm saying like yeah what like that like that journey. and i'm like i want chicken nuggets yeah. as a kid you know like, stupid red fuck? light i'm gonna hurry <laughs> you know like <laughs> yeah. i'm a little kid complaining about whatever or i'm an mm-hmm. adult being like oh you know these i don't know just mundane shit and and we were talking about this um last night too with my other guests and said like you can never 
I mean, maybe if you hooked up two people, but it'd be really hard to quantify this. But you can never necessarily quantify the extent of someone else's pain. And especially when it comes to the comparison pain game, <laughs> just because someone has gone through something more traumatic does not mean that the individual who has not experienced something more traumatic is not feeling the same amount of pain and or anguish yes. and or fear, right? Yes. And, and, and that doesn't discount either or, but it does create some room for compassion and understanding in the sense like, yeah. even if you're a trust fund kid, there's a potential, a lot of trust fund kids off themselves. Yeah. There, there, there's, a, there's a good chance that we do not know. I had the same yeah. conversation the other, the other night too. Mm, like mm, yeah. so, so synchronistic here. <laughs> <clears throat> like, I mean, yeah, I, I could tell you some things in my life that were mm. that you'd be like, "That's fucking incredible." These suicide attempts, whatever. Mm. And like, and like, that's like big traumas and like yeah. all these things. And someone else maybe doesn't have that. Right. But it, it, the 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 theoretical comparison of trauma is doesn't work. Right. It has no it? relevance to that at all. Yeah. Yeah. And that my experience of that. Yeah. Was equal to the other person's experience of. Maybe they got kicked out of the house once when they were 15 for a night. Right. And or sent their, their Xbox got taken away something or whatever. Like that. Yeah, like, it does not know, yeah. it's Stuff the, where you think it's stupid. In, in, you know? Yes, it doesn't, yeah. ma- it doesn't match up. Right, it doesn't it match does up. Ma- the, 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 it doesn't The equate. individual experience was exactly the same. Right. It means as much, that means as much to that person as mine does to me, as yeah. someone with like severe sexual abuse in their childhood means to them. Right. Like, it right. does not matter what yeah. the trauma is. Yeah. The individual gets to experience that the way they experience it and yeah. honor it. And we don't get to poo-poo it. We don't get to say it's less no. than. There's no pissing contest when it comes to trauma. Yeah, yeah. Especially when the potential is self-deletion. Like, yeah. it's like, how are you, right. you know, like, you, you know, people could try to poop on it. It's like, how are you going to say that when this is literally yeah. happening? You know? Um, so, yeah. I, I love this because we're touching on so many points. There's so, like, so much at, like, the heart of what this whole thing is about. Yeah. I feel like a lot of what we've touched on today is like literally the the inner workings, like the the guts of 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 this this machine, this uh, uh-huh. um, this entity or, or or living, breathing, breathing like beingness of of what wants to be brought forth. Yeah, right. Is the ownership? Is the understanding? Is the compassion? Is like the 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 oversight? Truly, because like what we just talked about with like not being able to compare trauma or like what someone's going through, like that's an oversight, Mm -hmm. right? Like you have to understand to a certain level, you have to have been there to a certain extent and also recognize like that's not matching up and yet these individuals do that. Oh, wow. And I can say for myself, like my stuff was tumultuous and yet like, yeah, there are people who have gone through way worse stuff and they would have never, you know, thought about deleting, you know what I mean? Right. So how does that match? Like so much there. Yeah. I remember yeah. when I, when I first got into AA, mm-hmm. um, like part of my problem with it, mm-hmm. my disconnect was that I would get in these rooms of 30, 40 other people that would talk about like massive, lots of physical abuse, sexual abuse, verbal abuse, broken homes, mm-hmm. chaotic homes, like mm-hmm. really terrible home life from the first 15 years. And I'm sitting there thinking like, what am I doing here? <laughs> like I didn't have that. Yeah, like I did yeah. not have that experience. Like yeah. uh, my st- my I literally don't have a reason to be here. It doesn't make sense that I'm here. Mm. And I had to get beyond that. Right. And look at like oh I was actually like fearful every day of my life because I couldn't breathe. Right. And like just like but like me trying to match that trauma yeah. was not getting me anywhere. Any yeah. closer to healing, it was creating separation in myself and the in the path and all that thing. Mm. So just like the the willingness to say. Just because it doesn't look the same doesn't mean it's not the same. Yeah, yeah, agree. Yeah. Mm, just because it doesn't look the same doesn't mean it's not the same. You you banging out quotes. This, <laughs> this, this pod, bro, it's been good. Man, mm. oh, yeah. Shoot, I, fuck yeah. I mean, yeah. like, I think it's, like, it, what you speak yeah. to, too, is like, th- these are the guts of the human experience. Mm. How do we relate to each other and yeah. to our lives? Yeah. Like, w- and how do we choose mm-hmm. to show up and relate. Yeah. Like it's not just about the woman in front of us or the man in front of us. Mm-hmm. Like if you have a problem in your relationship, you probably have a problem with your work. You probably the, the same people that get broken up with a lot are the same yeah. people that get fired a lot. Like it's a relationship. It's how mm-hmm. do we consciously relate to our experience and to the the world around us. Mm-hmm. And when we can do it with compassion and love and grace and honor and discipline and yeah. accountability and like all the standards and values that we have, mm-hmm. things in your life get a lot you you automatically have less you have more bandwidth, more yeah. capacity, yeah. less vitriol, less anger, less mm-hmm. resentment, all those things. And when mm-hmm. the walls, you feel the walls come crashing in, you got to look at where, it's just so cliche, but where are you not being grateful? Where are you not mm-hmm. being compassionate? Mm-hmm. Where are you ju- being so hard on yourself because you're not worthy? Self-judgment, self-resentment, mm-hmm. self-anger. 
yeah. all those things. Mm. Mm. Fuck yeah, bro. Yeah. Mm. Good shit. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot, I'm like, I feel like this this pod has been so efficient and effective on like covering all of the good. I'm like, I'm kind of just like, I've never been at this place where I'm just like, I don't want to say like tap down in a bad way, but I'm just kind of like, holy shit. I, I don't even know what to say. Like, yeah. I, I, like I feel like um, what I, what I always want to dive into and talk about, we've gone there and we've gone, we've like scraped the, the, yeah. the bottom of the barrel. I mean, yeah. what, what else, what else is there for you? Is there anything that, that feels alive mm. for you to speak to? I feel like there's a conversation happening around um, sacred sacred spaces and safety. Mm. Um, some people take some people. There's stories and stuff out there about like the sacred space, the psychedelic space, or the the retreat space. Yeah, um, not being held in the highest. And I think mm. that it, it just gets to speak like it gets to be spoken about that um, these spaces are not to be like the facilitators and the participants get to really mm. take this is back to ownership space, but yeah. like really take ownership of what the what the role is there. Right. And like say, like, are you signing up for this and, and going in? And then is the facilitator is it a no for you and you say yes because your friend brought you there or because you think it'd be good for you? Mm. And this facilitator is are you going in with the proper training? Or are you just like, mm-hmm. did you go to one event and you think you can do it now? <laughs> you know, I think that did you sit in one eye ceremony and now you're a facilitator? Like, I meant to be a shaman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ayahuasca is my medicine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, like, I think uh, like there's there's a, a a deeper level of honoring, and mm. this and this comes with what we talked about before too about how much work have I done? Yeah. on my own mm. without substances, without mm-hmm. um, like the ethereal places, the alter states of consciousness, how much human work have I done right. to get to the point where like, I, can, I can actually know and choose with um, discernment the mm-hmm. spaces that I go into. And then from the facilitator place, how do I know that I have the training and I'm not just, mm-hmm. is, there's, there's no shadows there. Mm. There's not, I'm coming in here as, uh, to pray or to do anything like that. Yeah. Like, how do I really, how do, how do both parties get to navigate this, these sacred spaces so that they remain sacred? Mm. Mm. Because it's, it's, it's such a vulnerable and um, fragile place, really. Yeah. You know, they're safe. Like, when they're done right, they're safe and safe set and setting and all that. Right. And there's so much going on that there's so much, there, there needs to be so much awareness and, and um, kind of boundaries and standards set in place that these things get to remain sacred. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Keep keep what's sacred secret. Keep secret sacred. Right. Yeah. And I mean, not to say that like things are things are the the great revealing is happening right now. Yeah. And yet, I agree in the sense of you know not giving into this space of peer pressure or inner pressure on the mm-hmm. self to do things that. But once again, this comes to the space of like ownership as well. Yeah. Totally. Like, is it a full yes? Like, what are we choosing to? Like, there are consequences for actions, and. You know, and maybe some of those people have to go through that so that they do end up seeing the other side of that, right? Yeah. And yet also, like, I do get the frustration with it as well because it, yeah. I've been in situations like that. Like, one of the reasons why I hadn't sat with Aya again since then was because I had a, it was, the container was not mm-hmm. appropriate. Yeah. You know, I totally understand that as well. Yeah. I think, I think it comes back to, like, discernment. Yeah. You know, if, if you're listening to this, just be, be super tapped into yourself. And mm-hmm. if, if it feels like a no, yeah. it's probably a no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Agreed. It. Yeah. And also when you feel like there's something that you know would be potentially beneficial. Yeah. And you want to say no. Yeah. Then it's probably a yes. <laughs> <laughs> that right there. That's it. You know. That's that, oh. yeah. Mm. Well, that was a great that was a great closing word. Is there anything else that you'd want to leave the, the people with? Um I don't think so. Nothing's coming in. Sweet, yeah, I, I right. I feel like yeah. we we I feel like we fucking went the distance, bro. Yeah. Um, how can people find you? Uh, yes, thank you. First of yeah. all, thank you so much for one creating this space. Yeah, yeah, bro. Um, I saw this pop up mm. yeah, months ago when you started yeah. this, and I was like, damn, yes, that feels fucking good. <laughs> yeah, oh, um, man, and thanks scary. for having me. Thank, I'm so glad this yeah, lined bro. up, man. It's such oh. it's such an honor to con- consider mm. you a brother and to to be in the places we've been in together. Yeah, and, man. You know from. Oregon coast to Costa Rica right. to Westwood. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really, really cool, man. Mm. It's, it's awesome to call you a friend. Thank you, brother. Likewise. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, find me on Instagram is the best place at Sam Gibbs Morris. That's G I B B S, Sam Gibbs Morris. And it'll be linked everywhere. Yeah. Everything, be- <laughs> everything, everything goes from there. <laughs> it'll, it'll be linked down below wherever this is. But yeah. 
Bro, I just want to say thank you so much. This has been such a such a beautiful dance mm-hmm. to have with you. Yeah. Um, sometimes I have people on here and I'm like, I don't know if they know that they're supposed to pause or give spaces, <laughs> you know, and I just ride with it. Mm-hmm. Um, but this was so beautiful. Yeah. And oh, man, I feel like I'm being really blessed, not only with with having you here, but like the the discourse that we've had, what we've been able to share here. Mm-hmm. Has has lit me up, and it feels so good to like I I knew your heart, but to also like fully know in the space where we're like eternalizing this conversation, like to mm-hmm. know where you're at, to yeah. know the work that you're doing, to be able to learn from you as well, mm, you. Um, and know that I can count on you and call on you, yeah. you know, for the specialties that you hold and that you are passionate about mm-hmm. and involve yourself with. I feel so grateful and and blessed because it's it's very on time <laughs> for me in all the ways. Yeah. So I just want to say thank you. For, for coming on and and I look forward to a part two. Yeah. I look, I look forward to a part That'd two. That'd be amazing, brother. Thank you, bro. Yes, thank you as well. Super grateful. Yeah, man. Mm. Oof. Yeah. Oof. This has been the Magnanimous Collective with Sam Gibbs Morris. We'll see you guys again on the next one. Peace.